I tell you what, it makes a nice difference to be able to come into one of these videos, me previewing the next game, Southampton on Saturday, early kickoff, and not do it off the back of United being abysmal. First two games of the season, Brighton and Brentford, let's just pretend it didn't happen. They were games 39 and 40 of last season. That Liverpool game there was game one of this new season. So many positives to take from it. I'm going to run through my predicted, maybe not just my predicted, what I think we should be starting. Well, Eric Ten Hag should be starting against Southampton. I'll run through each position. We'll have discussions about Casemiro, about Varane, about Ronaldo, about Martial. And you can let me know what you think in the comments. As always, make sure you subscribe to United People's TV, ladies and gents. If you're new in town, I really need to update that video at the start. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the notifications bell as well. Yeah, but it's nice to be coming with this sort of energy into one of these videos. You know, going into that Liverpool game, we were nervous. We were tetchy. We were worried. And this was the starting eleven that Eric Ten Hag chose. It wasn't really too many surprises. It, I got 9 out of 11 right. What did I get wrong? I got um, McTominay. I didn't think he would start. I thought Fred would start. And I didn't predict Elanga to start on the left-hand side. I thought I had Rashford there. Oh, it was, did I have Ronaldo through the middle? Can't quite, I can't quite remember. I think it was Ronaldo or Martial. Neither of them started. There are quite a few questions to ask about this. So this is the starting 11 from the last game. And I definitely will be making changes. Now, if we're looking at probably... The biggest positive from that first game there of this new season against Liverpool, I'll probably say it's a partnership there of Martinez and Varane. And there's absolutely no way that I would change that. That was fantastic. That worked. They balanced well. And I know that this is a case of, uh, it's a, it's a, what, a 60-game season and Ten Hag's going to have to rotate. But nah, man. You're keeping that, surely you're keeping those two together. That's what I think. So anyway, you can let me know what you think in the comments below, but I'll be extremely surprised if he changes either of those. And I'll be extremely surprised if he changes this lad. I, I, was, I was waiting waiting for him to start his first game for United and he did not disappoint. Really didn't disappoint. Yeah, he made some mistakes, but he has excellent recovery and the tenacity to recover that. That's, that's what he'd done uh, at, at Feyenoord as well. And he's done that. I, I think Delo showed a bit more bit more in that game. The low is still a little bit concerned about, but he's definitely the best right-back option we've got at the club, for sure. And unless we bring someone in, I don't think he'll be going out of that starting eleven really a lot this season, as long as he's fit and capable. But it's when we move into midfield that we can start talking. And my next point, after, as I say, I want to shout out a Super 6 here, but after this, we have, we're having a conversation about Casemiro, so you definitely want to stick around for this bad boy. <laughs> Big up to Super 6 for supporting United People's TV these last few weeks. And I'll tell you what, it's nice to come in and do some of these predictions this week with the Super 6 after Man United have actually, you know, won a game of football. A really cracking performance against Liverpool. Liverpool play Bournemouth this week. Who has City got? Palace at home. I'm going to run through my predictions. Now, all you've got to do is follow the link in the description. Join the United People's TV League. If you get them all right, you might be in with a chance of winning a million quid, which is, well, that's good news, right? And even if you don't do that and you beat my score, which probably won't be that difficult, I'll be completely honest, you can win a United shirt. So make sure you follow the link in the description, join the league. But these are my predictions this week. I think City, I reckon it'll be a good game against Palace, but I think they'll have enough. So we'll beat them at home 2-1. I think Liverpool bounce back after being, let's be honest, played off the park, really, against United at Old Trafford. 3-0 for them. Uh, Leicester, Chelsea. I'm just going to, I'm going to back Chelsea to sneak that one. I think it'll be quite a tight game. Arsenal right now, it hurts me to say, look at how good they're playing right now. 5-1, they might concede a goal, but I think they'll spank Fulham. Wolves and Newcastle, calling that a one-all draw. And I think Spurs will easily beat Nottingham Forest 2-0. For my golden goal, I have gone for the eighth minute. All you've got to do is submit your predictions. Follow the link in the description. Could be in with a chance of winning a million quid. And even if you don't get that, you might win a United shirt. What more could you want? Right then, now we get to have a conversation I've been looking forward to for so many years. Where do we play our new defensive midfielder? Well, I think you know the answer to that question. I suppose the question that should have been, would he be fit to start? Now, Casemiro was pictured in training today, full training with Manchester United. Uh, his work permit is obviously sorted, otherwise he couldn't legally do that. So Casemiro should be available for the game, as long as he's fit. Now, Casemiro has had a full preseason with Real Madrid. He was on the bench in their first game. I don't doubt for any split second that he's not going to be fit enough to start here. This is going to feel nice. Sorry, Scott Matomane. Matomane on the bench and Casemiro in there. And honestly, just look at that team now. Just by dropping Casemiro in there, that feels 
so much more solid. The balance is there. Oh, I can't wait to see what this lad can do. I mean, I know exactly what he can do. He's proven it at Real Madrid year after year after year. He's already got a smile on his face training with his teammates. Interestingly, alongside Fred there. That's a, that's a conversation we have, need to have across the season. But I think in this game, we'll probably see Casemiro there with Ericsson in front of him and Bruno as the number 10. I imagine. Now, that will probably mean that Casemiro... Of course, you know what happens in the 4-2-3-1 under Eric Ten Hag. When, you're, when we line up to start the game, it will be like that. When we're um, out of possession, out of possession or in possession, I'm not sure. No, I'm trying to think about this. We're going to line up as a 4-2-3-1 there. But as soon as we go forward, Ericsson will drop, will go for, forward a little bit. Bruno will bring up and Casemiro will drop in behind. Casemiro is going to make this his playground. That area of the pitch there. I wouldn't mind if he never left that area of the pitch. That's where we need someone to marshal in front of that defense to protect Varane to protect Martinez, to offer some protection to the fullbacks. Maybe if they bomb forward, Casemiro can drop into the space behind. He is a defensive king. And as much as I, I, I wanted Frankie de Jong, it is a completely different profile of player we've got in Casemiro and somebody who will make us so much better um, out of possession and so much harder to break down. We are going to become a far harder team to beat because Casemiro is in that team and we need to get rid of that soft underbelly and that's like adding a I don't know a suit of armor or a Kevlar jacket that's what Casemiro is going to be for this defense and it will mean that Ericsson's got a bit more freedom to really go forward because he knows he's got Casemiro in behind him I can't wait to see what happens if Casemiro is not fit to start I imagine you'll probably see well it's, you choose it's either Fred or McTominay either of them is going to be a compromise I think it'll be Ericsson who starts there, but if we don't get De Jong, and it looks like we're not getting him, I imagine Ericsson is going to be the player that Eric Ten Hag looks towards for replacing him this season, and he'll help Fred sort of learn and understand that role. But deep playmaking is more natural to Ericsson than it is to Fred, who should, when Fred comes into this team, he will operate, instead of dropping deeper, he will definitely operate further forward there. That's where he's played very, very well with Brazil. That's where he's played very, very well with ah oh, good blocker whoops don't press the ads at the top of the screen <laughs> rule number one anyway let's move fred out of that team moving fred maybe loaded an advert up anyway i'm waffling let's move on from that position and let's move up front because there's definitely a big question to be asked about up front and it's cristiano ronaldo and it's anthony martial because I think one thing that's absolutely going to happen, you're going to see Alanga drop to the bench. You're going to see you're going to see Rashford come out left, and the question is just about which of these two do you start up front? Now you can let me know what you would do in the comments. I think Eric Ten Hag has got a really difficult. He's in a really difficult position right now because in Cristiano Ronaldo, he's got a player who he knows wants to leave, and a player who ideally he would probably allowed to leave because he'd find a new club but if Ronaldo is going to be staying because he can't find a club he has to keep Ronaldo happy does that mean that he comes in for this game against Southampton but Martial was on the bench and we played well in that first half I thought Martial had a great impact when he came on in that second half at half time he was sort of like telling Van Dyke where to go where to defend really really good performance from Martial and he looked fit he looked sharp but I imagine Ronaldo's now got that fitness I honestly don't know which way this one's going to go. But, but I think if Ronaldo is completely fit to start this game, I think Ten Hag might throw him an olive branch. Because Ten Hag will probably be looking at this going, you know what, probably going to have Ronaldo now for the season. The last thing I want is just a pure sulking Ronaldo on the bench. Start him here. Because what he's got to do now is, is rotate these players in and out. He's going to have to keep Maguire and Lindelof happy somehow. Playing them in the cup games in and out. It's not just about sticking to the same eleven. No, look, I always go back to it, but Fergie was the best at it. That year in 99 with York Cole, Sheringham and Solskjaer. With Sheringham and Solskjaer both scoring in the Champions League final. It's about keeping your players all chomping at the bit and giving them all minutes across the course of a season. But that would be my start 11 to face Southampton. I wouldn't change Rashford or Sancho. I think both of them, well, of course, both of them scored against Liverpool, but both of them... Looked up for it, hungry for it. Now, of course, with Ronaldo up there, you can't really play that higher press as well. 
that will be a slight issue maybe but maybe bruno will drop of course there's pressing issues that come with ronaldo but well they've always been there since day one what do you think about that as a starting 11 do you think we'll see casemiro come into that team i really really hope we do i really want to see casemiro start this game man we were so good against Liverpool. Just imagine what happens when he dropped Casemiro into that. Oh, it's just, it's the levels. Uh, the levels are just ridiculous. The levels are crazy by comparison. But that's my start eleven there. No changes in that back five. Casemiro in for McTominay and Ronaldo in for Ilanga. They're the two changes I think we'll see. But you can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV and make sure you don't click the adverts at the top of the little formation. Otherwise, you'll you'll just come up. Don't do that. It's a bad idea.